many times do I have to repeat this to you? I'm sick and tired. What the hell's that? I don't know. I think somebody's at the door. Hey. You can't even film stuff without people knocking. Uh, well, you know, that's the way the world. Who is it? But don't start personally insulting me. Huh? But don't start personally insulting me. Welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and Afaro, filmed only here out of Indie Music TV. It is Thursday, it is 9 p.m., hmm. and we'll welcome everybody aboard on what we're going to call the Monty and the Faro Marathon. Marathon, and this is the first leg. Yeah, this is the first leg. The rest of the turkey comes on Saturday when you start drinking. <laughs> At the board is Matty Ice, super producer. Matty, how are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. Yeah? Uh, I mean, work's a little stressful, but besides that, you know. Did you tell people out there that they're, uh, you're getting different types of pays for different types of jobs? Wow. Yeah, I'm wearing three hats. and Three hats? Yeah, three, three different jobs in my company right now. Interesting. And uh, one of them pays less. And I have to do, deal with it until they find someone new. I never heard of such a thing. Wait a second. What is it? Like on certain days you do one of the three jobs and it pays you less than on another particular day? No. I just have oh. to make sure both jobs are done by the end of the Interesting. every day. Interesting. Three jobs, one paycheck. I don't know if that's uh, the world. I guess. Wait a minute. There's nothing unoriginal about that. <laughs> I've never heard of that before in my entire life. <laughs> Different departments. I, I think it's illegal, dude, to be honest with you. But Wow, that's weird. You know, that's me. What the, what the hell I got, I did, 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 Whatever, whatever. Matt's prospering. Let, let him prosper. So anyway, we're going to talk a little world news. I guess it's world news. It's really not because it's got wrestling involved in it. But, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. we really should well, talk about the presidential. Uh, the what? The what? The presidential what? You know, address the, the dressing the union. Oh, the State of the Union. The State of the Union. Oh, okay. But I don't want to get into it because no. I just was getting really mad, so uh, I, yeah, I really well, don't want to get mad. Or... really mad all day. Leave me alone. Next. Dude, watching what? Pelosi yeah. back there, I... Pel I Pelosi? I, oh, my Wait God. a minute. She's still around? Oh, yeah. I. They didn't put Double her in horns a, and all. They, all. Wait a minute. They didn't put her in a sarcophagus and mail it to Egypt to, be, to, to lie with the pharaohs? <laughs> I, she's like oh, 7,000 years old. She's still alive. Oh, wow. Please. I thought she had gone away. Interesting. <laughs> so she's still around. The, okay. Anyway, That's Glenn nice. Jacobs. You know who Glenn Jacobs is, right? Yeah, sure. Went sure. to Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got all in trouble for <laughs> what did tweeting do? something. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> Hellfire so I'll, re and I'll read what he wrote. He wrote, Hellfire historically, in the real world, might makes right. Yeah. Weakness. True which is really what the left is all about, <laughs> is not a virtue. Oh, it's a fatal character flaw. Ooh, and no, right. the right. U.S. should still not get involved. Right. He yeah. also added, right. I highly doubt Putin cares a whit about toxic masculinity, masculinity right. the cancel culture, or any of the other things the radical left stands for. Wow. What do you think? Well, okay. Um... Historically, in the real world, might makes right, correct. Uh, weakness, which is really what the left is about. Interesting opinion. Uh, definitely not going to assassinate him for having that thought. It's his right. And, uh, okay. Uh, U.S. should still not get involved. Uh, wow, that's a very interesting point. Dude, do, 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 should we really care what happens over there? 
as far as what what's going on with the Ukraine? I mean, I, don't, I actually don't think it's so cool what's going on over there. But at the same time, should we be involved? Hmm. Good question. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Will it make the gas prices go down? <laughs> Will it make the food <laughs> prices go down? Yeah, they'll probably they'll probably find a way to jack everything up anyway, right? I mean, war usually brings those prices down, right? Do they bring those prices Historically, down? Historically, right? You always got to turn to history. That's why you learn about history, right? So this is what bombs away really means? Bombs away means lower prices. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, um, Adam Page, the <laughs> AEW <laughs> champion, <laughs> responded to Glenn Jacobs' oh, no. tweet. Oh wow! With a with a bunch of gifts of uh, ten ruthless chair shots Kane took to the head. Nice, nice. All right. So what does that mean? Adam Adam Page is progressive, and uh, I guess Adam Page is saying that Kane's taking too many headshots. He's out of his his mind. Well, do you disagree with what Kane said? I I. A no, lot. what I do. I mean, I it's his opinion. I don't know if I fully disagree with what Kane said. Uh, well, let me. There's a few you, things let, that made sense. Let me ask you this question. This is right. Strange. So for for the last twenty years or fifteen years, right? Yeah. This country's been in a, an uproar about disarming, uh -huh. right, and getting rid of the Second Amendment, right, or right to bear arms. Sure, right. right. right? We've been going through that. Right. So, uh, if you're the Ukraine, mm -hmm. and Russia comes marching through your door, yeah, and you're had the mindset of disarming your 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 people might have been a mistake to think that way right <laughs> now you got no, now all these great ukrainians who are fighting yeah. back we right. have nothing to fight against so right. maybe we should think twice about getting rid of the second amendment what do you think yeah well i do believe that people have a right to bear arms if that's what you're getting at that's well, part of the amendment right? i mean for god's sakes what are we talking about here you know it's it's each individual's personal responsibility to know what to do with that that free right you know and i don't think you should have the right to take that away from somebody you do have the right to protect yourself and uh, for those of people out there who think that you know everybody should just hand over their guns um, you got some balls deciding how somebody else should protect their children how about shut the fuck up what works for you works for you and what works for them works for them and hopefully you're not living next door to a gun happy maniac you know I don't know what to tell you 802 you says know? four bucks a gallon in Vermont hmm? Maria Davis 418 up that's in Pennsylvania. insane that's insane. But this is the People's Party, though, in, in the office, isn't it? Aren't they for the people? Wasn't that the whole, uh, you know, bill of sales during the last... Uh... Well, before, well, listen, before we get, you know... <laughs> What's listen, it? I, I really, you know what, I don't even know why I brought it up, because... Because you like, want to get me pissed off. Go I'm ahead. pissed off. Well, I know I'm you're pissed, pissed off. off. I right. am pissed well, then off. Well, tell us why Mr. Monty is pissed off. I Go just, ahead. I just can't believe what's going on right now. Right. I just, I, and you know what? I don't want to offend people. Aren't you and... deserved? Boy, anyway, this shit. to make it worse, yeah, must be. Thrilled. WWE names the Fitterman Sports Group as their official autograph partner. The who? The WWE. No, no, I got that. Fitterman Sports. Fitterman. All right. WWE announced today the multi-year agreement w that will make Fitterman Sports Group and the official autograph partner of the WWE in the United States and Canada. Mm. This is the first partnership of its kind in the autograph space. So, okay. you know what this means? What does this mean? Guys like the agents that bring some of these wrestlers in here, things like that. Yeah. They ain't going to... This may Whoa. all be changing. Whoa. Think about it. A guy like Tony Atlas who might be signed to a Legends contract. Yeah, yeah. For now on to get his bookings, yeah. it has to go through the Fitterman group. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, have, you, have you called the, 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 these very nice people? The Fitterman group? Yeah, the Fitterman group. You're going to call them. Right? No, I'm not <laughs> calling I'm just the fucking I'm with not you. calling the Fitterman <laughs> group. 1-800-Fitterman. Could you imagine? Wait a minute, though. What does this mean, though? Come over here. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> what, did, what does this mean, though? I mean. What it means is what, that. What about all the want, people that come through these doors? Though? What if they if got, you wanted, You better call Fitterman. Pat, Pat McAfee interviewed Vince McMahon, yeah. right? Or Brock Lesnar. If you yeah. wanted to interview Brock Lesnar, you have to call the Fitterman group. You got to call the Fitterman group. Well, well, guess what? I'll tell you what. It's probably easier than calling Vince because Vince. Yeah, if you wanted like, it, Who's if this? you want, like the big events got The Undertaker, they yeah. just announced them yeah. like the week before, yeah. days before, okay. right? Because the event's Saturday. All right. Right? Yeah. If you want The Undertaker, you got to go through the Fitterman Group. Uh, Fitterman. And the Fitterman Group, who paid $10 million for this deal, has got to get their money back, right? Oh, they'll get their so, money well, back. You, you think they'll get their Dude, money back? I, uh, in the long haul? I don't With know. The, you don't think so? 
To the right is the star of the show, Mr. Here's Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy. Yeah. This is the first leg of the marathon. We're, we're going to have our yeah. special guest, Big Ron Shaw. Yeah. I, um, don't, I don't know if we're going to survive this marathon. It's a long marathon. I come five well, it show, starts with five shows Shaw. in a row. Well, we'll see. Are you serious? I'd like to thank the band oh. that sings the theme song for the Monty and the Farrow Show, <coughs> along, our own Jimmy Farrow, <coughs> along with his partner, Bart <coughs> Griggs, make the band with Stereo Hall. Bart, man! Stereo Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. You can find their music on the Wisteria Hall YouTube page. Hit like yep. and subscribe. Spotify, yep. iTunes, and Reverb Nation. I want to ask the fans out there, we have been chosen to from YouTube to be um, the first YouTube page, or one of the first YouTube pages to be part of their music program. Okay. So you could start using YouTube m music. B40, welcome, my friend. Um, hey, yo. Might be the end of Wisteria Hall on the Monty and the Farrow page. What do you, well, think? What do you, what do you mean, the <laughs> end of the Wisteria? What, is your, what the fuck does that mean? On the Monty and the Farrow page? I have to use the YouTube music. What? Oh, you're going to move us over to what? Oh, you're going to use YouTube music instead of my music? Well, I never. Oh, well, whatever. Monty and Farrow can folks. be seen on the Monty and the Farrow oh, YouTube yeah. page. The Monty and the Farrow Facebook Live. Just think about that. Yeah. If yeah. YouTube comes out with, yeah. like, a co-host, <laughs> a co-host program, I might have to use that. A co-host program. <laughs> um... <laughs> Go fuck yourself as pleasantly as I could possibly say it. Next. Wow. Yeah. Here's yeah. on iHeartRadio, yeah. Spotify, what and the fuck? Anchor. Catch us on the Monty DeFaro Twitch TV Good. page. Matt, you're showing him, right? And if you're Not lucky, me. Him. If you're lucky to live in New York, uh, oy, you can catch oy, us oy. on New York Cable on Channel 115 every Tuesday at 9:30 and Saturday at 11:30 again Saturday Night Live and the Channel 20 for idiots Tuesday like at 1 a.m. in yeah, the morning for idiots where you sleep. will get the reduced version yeah. of this. It's not reduced. With the great, it's abbreviated. With the it's great condensed. Ron Shaw. Reduced. We also want to thank uh, all the partnerships for allowing this program to it's be the big number Ron eight. Short eight. You. What number eight? Number eight. Most watched wrestling not podcast. Oh, never mind. Anyway, but we'll be right back with pro wrestling superstar Ron Shaw after this. Got nothing to say. No. <laughs> okay. Hey, folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're going to want to call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. B-E-N-B-U-I-E-34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Tell him Wolfie sent you. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. Jeff Quest, graphics design, custom vinyl lettering, and all your art and video needs. 516-317-8204. That's for Jeff Quest, graphic design. Jimmy, I just got the best hookup on tickets. Hmm, fill me in. I went to www.seatslinks.com and ordered the best tickets with the best prices. Call 718-676-0504. Seatslink, the complete ticket experience. Tell them Charles sent you. Welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only filmed here out of Indie Music TV. We want to thank everybody for joining us. We are humbled as we're going into a fantastic long weekend, but we're starting off with one of your favorites. Yeah. Big Ron Shaw. Ron, how are you, buddy? Hey, guys. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me to the show. Uh, but you know something, right out of the gate, I have to say something here. You know, I've been aware of your guys, you guys, your show, and it happens to be the most controversial wrestling show, and if not the only controversial wrestling show that, that I have viewed. And I did see your show last week. And you know mm -hmm. something, Monty, I, mm -hmm. I needed to call you. And you know, you guys did call me to come on your show. But you know something, when we were talking, I needed to lay down some ground rules. And... Uh, you know, some of the questions that you said that you were going to ask me on this show tonight, it just wasn't appropriate to me. I didn't want to do it. But you were insisting on it. And I'll tell you something. I had to hang up on you. Now, your listeners ought to know one thing. Why did you lie? 
I hung up on you. Are you afraid to admit that? Now, when I hung up on you three days later, the Pharaoh gives me a call and he says, Big Ron, we want you on the show. We worked everything out. We want you on the show. And I called you up. And I said, okay, I'll, ha I'll be happy to do the show. But you know, another thing, Monty, one thing you said, well, I don't care to have Ron Shaw on the show. You know, he's been on other wrestling shows. I don't care. You know, I won't chase him down or nothing like that. Let me tell you something right now. In front of you, I am the only person, past, present, and future, who's got the most upsets in professional wrestling. Let me repeat myself. I've got the most upsets in professional wrestling. And that's something that the WWE has put me in. Their, 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 their big sports books of entertainment, their history books of the Big 50. I'm in the history books of professional wrestling because of that. Okay? So, Ron, I'm going to respectfully... Hey, hey, shut up. I'm not done talking yet. Whoa. Are you fucking kidding me? What's going up. on here? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Easy, bro. Yo, Ron. Oh, let me, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, on, Ron. I had to go through to get on your show, Monty. You shut up and you just listen to me. <laughs> I never had to go through stuff like this before on one of other shows. I've been on 15 shows in the last seven years, and these five, five wrestling shows, yours is the one that gave me the most problems. I want to be asked decent questions throughout this whole entire show. Has he seen our show? What, well, dude? Listen, Ron. Okay, I'm going to say this again. Understand that I don't think I lied to you, and you're gonna, if you're going to do our show, and I'm saying this respectfully, I'm going to ask questions, we're going to ask questions, and you're going to have to you'll either answer them or don't answer them. I'm okay with that. Look, I, I, don't want, I don't want any issues, dude. We try to respect guys your level, but understand something that this is my show, Okay. This is our show. And our show. Our but show. if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna, look, dude. Here's the deal. Yeah, you're right. I really look with all due respect. You're 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 a legend in the business. I get it. Whatever else. But again, I'm not gonna retread all the garbage that's been out there already. Right? We've heard the story already. And uh, look, dude. Show me the respect. I'm trying to show you. That's all I'm trying that's, to say to you. That's fair. Is that fair? That's fair. I gave you the respect. I, you know, I gave you the respect when I called you and I talked to you and I said, let's, let's, let's do this show a sophisticated way. No trash talk, nothing like this. Let's not talk about other issues I've talked on 15, 14 other shows because there's other issues to talk about with Big Ron Shaw. Well, go ahead, buddy. This is your guy. Uh, this, is, this is the guy you wanted on the show, yeah. so have at it. Well, so, Ron, I'll tell you what. I'll sit back, and I'll let the Pharaoh interview you since you can't seem to handle I don't think the questions I got I don't have. think that's necessary. I've got, I've got no problem with that. The Pharaoh seems like he's a decent guy, decent okay. level-headed guy. We talked on the phone, man, and, and, I, I, and I have to totally respect the Pharaoh. Well, Ron, I thank you for that. But, wow. Uh, look, uh, right? I, I don't want to get off to a bad start. I, I really don't. The listeners don't want to hear us arguing. They want to hear informative wrestling news and, 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 and what happens in the past and so forth. So let's, let's get on with the interview. Ron, Ron respectfully, though, um, we talked earlier in the week, and you know what kind of show we do have, and I thank you again for coming on. Mike, are you cool? You all right? I mean, I didn't expect... Go ahead. I just didn't expect it for him to... I'm just surprised he brought it up again. Go we, ahead. Had, we had talked during the week, but... All right, um... Looks like it's up to me. I'll uh, take my have, unicycle have, and give it a... I have some special news that I want to present out there to break, to break on your show. Something that's really, really exciting in my wrestling career, towards the end of my wrestling career. Shoot. And may I announce it? Yes, please. Shoot. Okay. Well, number one, I had a promoter call me and uh, wants to bring me down to New York for a convention and some appearances for about a weekend, three days, and so forth, and I haven't exactly accepted yet. I may have other uh, commitments, uh, but that's, it's not impossible that I'm not going to do it. I, I'm not going to say that yet. The other big news is, is that I was contacted by the International Wrestling Federation Hall of Fame in Boston and the two administrators, Victor Soigastoa, <laughs> excuse me, uh, who was a worker at the time. He worked as 
Vic Vicious throughout Mexico and Canada, and the other the other person, Brittany Brown, who was the International Wrestling Federation Women's Champion for a year, the administrators. They invited me to come up later this summer for the H Hall of Fame uh, reunion dinner and to induct me into the Hall of Fame. And, you know, some of the big names in there is John Studd, Nikolai Volkov, Killer Kowalski, Sebastian Booger, King Kong Bundy, Iron Mike Sharp, and the list goes on and on. So that's a heavy, heavy bunch of names there, and I will be so delighted. It hasn't happened yet. I'm going up later this summer, but I've been asked to be deducted into the Hall of, in, inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I'm really thrilled about that. How's, how's that make you feel? I mean, did you ever think you would... Uh not only just be remembered, but get that sort of uh, accolade all these years later? Uh, no, I, I, never, I never thought that. You know, when, when it was three years ago, when the WWE put me in the history books uh, because of my upsets and my, my uh, match in Madison Square Garden uh, on the brawl to end it all, uh, I thought that was enough. I never, I never even thought about the Hall of Fame. Okay, but there are three Hall of Fames out there that are recognized. The uh, of course, WWE, IWF, and I think the Universal Wrestling Federation. So, you know, these are three heavyweights right there. Ron, did it ever bother you that you never got further on the card? You were clearly bigger <laughs> than some of the people you were putting over. Uh, did that ever get in the way of your uh, professionalism towards what you were asked to do with the company? Well, I, here's what you had to understand, is when I was leaving Kowalski school, there was another week left of my training, and I asked Kowalski, I said, I said, Walter, I said, how am I doing? He says, you're doing great, Ron. I said, well, good. I said, I'm leaving after next week. My 16 weeks is up. I'd like to go to work for the WWF. Now, I could have said anything else, and I'd like to go here, I'd like to go there, but I knew where the money was. And when I started out, you know, they, they, they took me in pretty much two months after I started getting bookings already. And you have to understand what professional wrestling is. It's like any other job. You're hired for a position, and it's up to you to show your bosses that you want to move up in the company. And I did. And I did. What I did was very well done. That's why I was used all the time. I mean, I just didn't work for the WWE. You know, I did international wrestling for two years. Then in 86 was one of my busiest years. I was still working for WWE, but I went up to Montreal, Canada to work for, G for uh, uh, Dino Bravo, and Rick Martel was even up there. And then I was working for Crockett Promotions a little bit here and there. And that was one of my toughest years of traveling and trying to make all the, all the commitments that I had. But they knew Ron Shaw was a top worker in the business, and if that was my job to make people look good, no matter what size, that's what I did. Ron, you were around during the time that Eddie Mansfield was around. Um, any thoughts on when he had the balls to expose the business? And it was way before the infamous curtain call with the click at the uh, garden. Any uh, thoughts on having the lid ripped off of, uh, you know, the sport we all love? Well, you know, the Faro man, that's a great question. You know, the 14 shows that I've been on, nobody's ever asked me that question. Mm. And, uh, you know, what I thought about it at the time is uh, there was a uh, great reporter in Philadelphia from the Philadelphia Inquirer uh, newspaper, and they asked me, hey, they're doing a story here on this guy, uh, um, and I've never heard of him, okay? He's exposing the business, and what do you think of it? So they came over to my house. Uh, they took pictures, and this was over a period of a week, because it was, this was a nationwide story that went for six, maybe even well, five, six days, I'm sure, anyway. And it was bits and pieces of this article. But they relied on me heavily. And, you know, I've got, I've got those news stories up on my website and so forth. And, you know, what I had always said is I had to protect the business. So when he said that, when Eddie Mansfield had told the reporter, well, no, 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 you know, we're told when to lose, how long, or when to win, and so forth, etc. cetera. And, and, and I would come back and say, well, you know, that's not so, because the winners get paid more than the losers. So you're always trying to win your match. And of course, I had to protect the business. And, you know, months or so after that story aired, you know, even Gorilla Monsoon, Arnold Skoll, said, hey, man, you did a good job protecting the business, because that's, that's what it was about, you know. 
we always wanted to make this business look legitimate as possible. And I certainly did. And, uh, you know, I can, I understand his gripe. He's getting paid $35 or $50 for a match and, and having to use the blade and all that. But he was working for small companies. They were the small companies, you know, uh, like, I don't even know. They're, they've been going so long. Mm. And this is why I want to go to the WWF. Took my chances. And I started making great money. I mean, especially in 19, 1981, you know, when they hired me in 80 to come up to do TV. I was making great money because also I was working as the executioner and Ron Shaw. So, you know, why, you know, what do I got to complain about? If they're going to move me up the ladder, which they did as the executioner, they were going to send me at the end of the year, I didn't know this, to California to work out for Mike LaBelle, and they told me this last minute, and I had gotten some advice from some of the guys, you know, S.D. Jones, Bob Backlund, Kowalski, and uh, it didn't sound like a very good thing to do. Uh, I decided not to go, and I figured I was going to continue working. Well, you know, Vince had let me go, and I went right to work for Kowalski for his bedlam from Boston, which was the IWF for two years. And, and I came back with Vince again. He took me back, no problem. You know, I talked to Mr. McMahon, and uh, he, he was such a great, such a great man. He said, "You know, Ron, we got a we got a lot of guys on board, but you know what? Come on back." And he took me back. What a what a, what a great guy to do that. And, and I ended my well, I didn't end my career until actually 1999. But my WWF reign went from 1984, five. Six and seven, and that's pretty much my end of my WWF years. So, senior you know, that, and that was a story, and I never regret it putting anybody over in this business. Senior and junior, pleasant to work for your experiences. Um, yeah, I, I have to say, I never had no problem. You know, I, you know, of course, he's a very busy man. Um, you know, the opposite of his father. His father was very low key. Uh, very, very, you know, nice to talk to. And, and if you had a problem, you know, when I, I would go to him. I, I can give you an example. One time in, uh, we were doing all-star wrestling there in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. I did a show in Middletown, Connecticut. It was a funny thing. I can remember the exact town. And I think the payoff was $300 that night. And they would always give you a $50 advance usually. And I did get that that night. But I never got paid the rest of that money. On that day, so I went in the office. I said, "Mr. McMahon," and I always use the word "Mr. McMahon." Uh, I did get paid for that night. I did get the uh, advance and so forth. And he took out two hundred and fifty dollars out of his pocket, gave it to me. I I didn't have that type of experience with this. Not that I was asking money from him, but you know, we we did have talks and so forth. And he was kind of stern in his talks, but I I had no problem with with with, with Vince Jr. I never did. Hey, Rod. It's Mike Monty. So it's uh, okay. question for you. Do you wear the executioner mask and eat a sandwich while you have it on? What? <laughs> you, you, you're, asking, you're asking me that question. Oh, my God. Especially, especially after what I, what I said about five minutes ago. Is, is this a laughing? comedy show? Is this a comedy show, Monty? Oh, boy. Let me tell you something. When I put on that mask, or I didn't put on that mask, I worked hard. Okay, I worked hard. I had my leg broken. Okay, it was pictured in that big uh, nationwide story, uh, story, uh, story that Ron Shaw, the legitimacy of his sport. I've broken fingers. I've broken knuckles. I've got a crooked shoulder to this day. And you're going to ask me a question like that? Come on, man. Wise up, will you? All right, I'll ask you, I'll ask you a serious question. When David Schultz slapped John Tossel, a uh, Stossel, sorry. What did you think was going on with the industry, and uh, what was Schultz like? Was he as crazy as it sounded? <laughs> the David, the David, say that again. David Schultz. Yes. Remember, he slapped well, he John Stossel. You would think, or as tough. Of course, the man was tough. He was a bounty hunter. The man was a bounty hunter also, okay? But professional wrestling is really what made him his money, okay? He didn't have to go chasing down goons. He came here, and, he, you know, he, he's got a pass. He's a tough guy, man. Tough guy. You know, I've talked to him a few times, but he was also a loner, too. Ron, Hulk Hogan comes along, and 
I remember your early days in the WWF very clearly. Uh, Hogan, of course, before Hulkamania, was also around during those days, the 80, 81 era. Um, when Hogan started to truly become Hogan, did you know beforehand what this man was capable of doing to this business? Uh, did you see the change coming? Were you surprised that it got well, as big I, as it did? Can I just interrupt you one question? Yeah. Patrick Rose says F. Cena and Boston Wrestling. F. Cena and, yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's fair. Continue yeah. on. No, very, very good. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, Ron, I'm sorry. How did you feel about the rise of Hulkamania? Did you see it coming? And were you surprised how big it got? I did not see that coming. And, you know, when, he, when, when Hogan came in, I, I don't know how many how many TVs had, he had done or, or how long I was there, but uh, I had a match against him on championship wrestling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, when we worked in the ring, I don't remember much what we even said about the dressing room, except that he, what finish that he uses, which was his uh, uh, leg drop across the throat. Uh, we went into the ring, and he, to me, he just seemed like he was a little lost in there. Really? I mean, you know, he did something where he sat me up on the turnbuckle, came over and just, you know, gave me a nice, gentle little slap on the cheek. And I came down, and, I, and if I remember correctly, I, I got some heat on him, and then we went into the finish. And when he got me back in the dressing room, he says, you know, Ron, I guess, I don't, I don't know why I tapped you on the cheek like that. And I kind of thought that was kind of a strange, strange thing to say, because here's a, here's a guy who, who's had more experience than me already, even though he might have been working in Atlanta and, and Minneapolis and so forth. Uh, but, you know, to answer your question, did I see it at the time? No. I did not see it at the time. But th did it surprise me? No, that he went on to be as big as he could because, you know, after, Bru after Bruno, the, the, the greatest world champion ever, Hulk Hogan came, and that was, that was another great world champion and then anybody after that i i couldn't have cared less for about him there, oh there, you, there you no tuned way. out after hogan wwf died as far as i was concerned after hogan uh was not with the business but he, he was a great star great talent he ended up being and we know the rest of the story ron is that when you stopped watching wrestling i mean after hogan like attitude ever did nothing for you rock austin nothing I, I pretty much, you know, I, I may have watched it a little bit longer after that. And, and, of course, I was, you know, I was still traveling through the 90s. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was doing a whole bunch of shows every month right. overseas. Right. And I had a wrestling school uh, after we did the NWF, me and my partner, A.J. Petruzzi, we were the executioners in the NWF in 1988 and 89. And, and that, that dissolved pretty much. And uh, had a wrestling school and... Uh, and I was ready to give up the business at that time because uh, I was working some shows at the TNA, uh, and it just wasn't going anywhere. And I called Kowalski up one day, and I said, hey, Walter, I said, you know, I'm thinking about quitting the business. You know, I could have called Vince up again, but it just didn't seem like, you know, what I wanted to do anymore with the type of flash and stories and so crazy storylines I've never even heard of before. And, Actually, actually, you know, when you watch it, I watched it, it got me disgusted, just, I guess, just like it did to Bruno. Uh, there was no place for that in wrestling. And uh, I, I just uh, called him up. I said, you know, I'm going to quit this business. He goes, wait a minute. He goes, you got a passport? I said, yeah. He goes, look, he goes, I'm going to pass your name to a promoter. So don't tell anybody that I helped you out here. Because, you know, he had his own school. He had his bookings that he had to get done to. And I wrestled... Uh, pretty much every month all around the world. You know, I'd go for about maybe five to eight, nine days, and, and uh, you know, wrestling was still wrestling like it was through the 90s. It just got, it just got worse, I guess, in the year 2000 or after I retired. It just got that worse. That, that, that's really when I really quit, quit watch. I mean, I probably didn't watch it, but, you know, it paid some attention to it, right? And that was, that was pretty much it. Talent enhancement, of course, uh, the modern term for what was known as the jobber. Um, strange question. Frankie Williams, Steve King, Jose Estrada, Johnny Rods, Angelo Gomez. Should I go on, Mike? Should I go on? Go ahead. Uh, guys like this, 
especially Frankie Williams, do they deserve any consideration for the Hall of Fame from Vince? I know some people are probably already laughing, but I feel like guys like Frankie Williams and yourself, certain people did certain things for a long time over there and did them very well. Any uh, thoughts on the validity of an enhancement talent getting the ultimate nod from Vince? Uh, I, I have to say, well, you know, Johnny Rogers put in the WWE Hall of Fame. Right. And, and I think rightfully rightfully so, because he was with the company. Right. When I was a little kid going down to Philadelphia's 46th and Market to watch the, you know, watch the TV tapings, mm-hmm. he was wrestling. Mm-hmm. And here I am, years later, wrestling him. But he, he was with the company so long, and, and he helped get some guys out there. I think he was training a few guys here and there and so forth. And, uh, uh, but he, he was a very lucky guy. He was booked all the time. And he was deserving. So the others... No. No, not deserving. I not mean, even you know, poor Frankie? WWE, Piper's Pit there's Frankie? A, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of guys in there that don't belong in there. You know? Okay. Okay. But, but, uh, yeah. Like the great Kali? Uh, I'm sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> so, Ron, <laughs> uh, people may not know this, but you wrestled in the three-man tag match when the Freebirds first came up here. Mm. I'm a big fan of the Freebirds. Uh, what was it like when those guys were coming up, and was there a problem because, you know, they were from down south? Did you have issues with them? And by the way, you, no, your partner was Butcher Pete Doherty, right? Right. That's right. Did I have a problem with them because they were down from the south? Is that what you're asking me? That's what I asked. Uh, no, why should I? You know, hey, hey. They, they were a, they were a talent, exciting talent. The place went crazy for them, and but I just don't think there was a uh, a long term position for them being a six man or a three man tag team. That was the only issue, and they, and they didn't last that long. You know, we I worked against them again in the Philadelphia Spectrum in my hometown with uh, uh, Rene Goulet and Charlie Fulton again, and uh, yeah, man, they they brought the electricity there. You know, Were they uh, over they with the ball? WWE crowd? Say that again, please. Were they over with the WWE crowd or audience? Yes. Oh, yeah, no question about it. Yeah, the, the people bought that, yeah. You don't think it could have been Vince uh, minimalizing talent from other areas that were actually, you know, main event types? Because Vince has been known to do that. You think that he might have, uh, you know, warded them down purposely? Any chance? It's hard. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. give you my opinion on that. I, I, no thoughts on that at all, you know? Okay, fair enough. It, cer- certainly that was a time, that was a time when, you know, he owned, he owned the company at that time. And, and you know, he had, he, he, had, he had a mission in mind. You know, he just didn't wake up the next morning and say, hey, I'm going to start stealing all the talent. Hmm. All right, we'll be right back with the great Ron Shaw after this commercial break. That's right, folks. Canine Corral for all your dog daycare and overnight care. Call 631-549-1544. That's 631-549-1544. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage, ask for Jack. In the mood for a freshly roasted cup of coffee? www.offtherailscoffeeroasters.com All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast where we have pro wrestling superstar, Big Ron Shaw. We want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. All right, Ron, I'm going to take over for now. Uh, Okay, Hogan, Morales, Backlund, San Martino, you've seen a lot of great champs. Who was bigger, San Martino or Hogan? Now, I already know he's your personal favorite, Bruno, but was Bruno bigger than Hulk Hogan 
in the long run. Your thoughts? Bruno was bigger in a sense that, you know, he promoted the wrestling. He was a wrestler's wrestler, a man that came out into the ring every night without a jacket, without this, without that, had the championship belt. And that was just as much, you know, as a turn on to the fans as Hulk Hogan coming out and his headband tearing off his shirts and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my opinion, you know, I always opted for the wrestling. You know, I'm old school, like a lot of guys still are today. Sure. But, you know, so I'm not taking nothing away, nothing away from Hogan. But, you know, of course, yeah, my, my favorite was always Bruno San Martino. And, you know, you know, at eight years old, I loved watching him. You know, he used to buy, as a kid, I used to buy wrestling books and this and that. And everyone had to have Bruno San Martino in it, of course. And, and you know, very fortunate to, to you know, be good friends with Bruno. And, and uh, unfortunately, I never was able to wrestle Bruno. Uh, he did interview me in Allentown when he was the color man. We were doing the international wrestling tapings and uh, uh, a couple times. As, you know, I had a match where my tag team partner, who turned on me and, you know, I bled in the ring and so forth. So we had a war, pretty much me and him, and, and you know, he interviewed me. But, you know, that, that's the best memory of Bruno I can have is, is, you know, it would have been wrestling him, but, you know, he at least interviewed me two times during that time. And uh, that's a great that's a great memory to have in my lifetime. Absolutely, uh, Bob Backlund in the middle of Bruno San Martino and Hulk Hogan. Do you think he doesn't get enough uh, credit, uh, like you know, being sandwiched between two such uh, large legends? Yeah, that's uh, you know that's that's a very good question. Um, did he did he think that? Who knows? You know, he, he was champion. On how long did he champion? Three, Almost, six years. Years, like Almost six years. Almost six years. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he apparently was a, a a very good champion. I I wrestled him numerous times. I I had I was the executioner and I wrestled him for a championship belt in a spot show. Uh, and and they were crazy for Bob Backlund, you know, mm -hmm. because of course of his past amateur status and so forth. So that was a different type of a wrestler, you know. But uh, it, it seemed like it worked out in history. <laughs> I think so. Well, Bob, Bob, I Bob think so. Was in studio. He's genuinely, uh, yeah, a great guy. He was awesome. But let me ask you, Ron, since in the land of Ron Shaw, rosiness, um, Rosie, Dale Cole, who's been on the show, he's the brother of Tom Cole, who uh, actually took his life about a year ago, uh, had issues with sexual harassment, and sued the WWE. Um, there was, it was called the Ring Boy Scandal. Mel Phillips and Terry Garvin, um, did you ever hear about these Ring Boy Scandals? Did you see this stuff going on? And did you see Mel Phillips and Terry Garvin doing this type of stuff? Well, you know, here we go again. Here we go again. You're, you're, again, this is a question that you said you were going to post to me on the show. And, and I... Didn't want to, I didn't want to answer this this here. I mean, this this is a little bit of, a, of, of something that's been in the past already. I don't think your listening audience is interested in hearing about this, especially out of my lips. I don't know nothing about that because, you know, I minded my own business, okay? I minded my own business. That's a fair enough answer. So let me ask you this. Someone who didn't mind their own business and went on Donahue and Larry King was mm. your hero, Bruno Sammartino, mm. who certainly and admitted it during these shows that he knew this was going on, but he blamed Vincent Mc Kennedy McMahon uh, for not doing anything about that. Why do you think Bruno didn't use his power to try to stop this? Well, what, what power did he really have at that time, if I'm not mistaken. I, I know they were at odds with each other. I think there was supposed to be a lawsuit against Vince. And uh, they, I, th I think maybe, I think there was a, you know, little settlement on the side that he would do color, commentary, and so forth. And, well, what could he have really done? That's a, that's a fair enough answer. I'm just asking. And I'm just answering. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Ron. If I can 
veer off in another direction. During your time period in the early days of working with um, Senior, there was another up-and-comer that I loved named Quick Draw Rick McGraw. Can I get your thoughts on Rick McGraw? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rick, Rick was a happy-go-lucky guy. I, I traveled with him a few times, and, and one time I traveled with him to the Philippines, my first ver uh, Philippine trip overseas. And uh, that was a lot of turmoil at that time. There was a lot of assassinations and, and, and uh, whoever the president was at the time. I, I can't think back. There was issues with him, scandals and so forth. And, you know, when we were getting off the bus, I can, I can remember as, as if it was yesterday. Rick got off the bus in front of me while there was these guards with, with these machine guns standing there. And he says, oh, shit, I can't believe I'm here. I said, well, Rick, I said, I'm right behind you. Don't worry. And, uh, you know, but, but it was okay. You know, we, we were pretty much in the hotel most of the time. We were able to go down to the, the you know, the bars and so forth and uh, uh, the districts. And, and one thing I do remember about Rick is at the end is when we were leaving, I think it was a three-week three week tour, um, he was, he, he, he got sick at the end of a show. And I know he was going to be taken to the hospital. And we flew back without him. He, he came back later. And then I don't know how many months later he took his own life. And that was a sad thing. But, you know, unfortunately it ran in the family. Uh, suicide. Mm. And uh, it's a shame because I, I had a lot of good matches with Rick. You know, I, did, I didn't realize that Rick McGraw took his own life. I was aware of but I didn't know it was running in the family, though. So, so. Ron, there's no truth to the rumors that revelation. during his match with Roddy Piper that that's what killed Rick McGraw. Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know anything about that. I, I never heard about that. Funny thing. It's interesting. Yeah. Fair enough. Ron, thanks for coming on. I've always been a big fan of yours, especially back in the days when we first met. I first met Mr. Monty uh, back in the days when you were, you know, doing the thing every... By the way, was this a good-paying job, or did you have to have a side job? Because after I learned that Gary Michael Capetta was really a teacher most of the time, I was very distraught. Uh, did they pay you enough <laughs> back in those days? I'm serious! You know, I, I, well, I, I don't think Gary Michael Capetta had to get paid the type of money that we got paid for just announcing all night. Right, okay. We took all the bumps, the bruises, the broken bones, and right. everything like that. Sure. And no, I never did have a, a, a part-time job because cool. I would have lost my job. I worked. I, I, I made this a point to have a living, make it a living. And cool. I said, yeah, there were some down times, and there was a lot of up times. But I knew, I knew when to get out of the business. And Excellent. I did it for 20 years. Excellent. All right. This seems more my partner's speed, so so please forgive me in advance. Was there anyone that Big Ron Shaw behind the scenes wanted to? He just wanted to beat their ass. I'm sorry. Behind the scenes, huh? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I you know, I, nothing. <laughs> nobody, nobody really comes to mind. Okay. So I, I guess there wasn't anybody. Oh. You know. It's because he was no, big, Ron Shaw. All right, Ron, here we go. We had David Sammartino in studio. Oh, here we go. Maybe uh, his uh, only go. interview. Oh, here he goes. That's what? Fine. All right. I, I, I'm rooting Whatever. that he answers he, he this clears his story. Uh, Listen, no, let, me, let me just ask the question. Can I ask the question? I've been asked this question. Fifteen times I've been asked this question, and I've given the same answers. Why don't you just go back and Google my other shows that I was on? There's 14 other shows. But... Go ahead. Go right. ahead. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, okay? First of all, you're on Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. But so instead, here's the question I'm going to ask you. Instead of with the kayfabe bullshit and acting like he hurt his back, uh, why don't you finally reveal to the fans that Sam Martino told you what was going to happen and you and you did what you had to do because that was your role. And stop keeping this story that you go for show to show to going on. Admit it on this show. Right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to tell you something right now. Mm -hmm. First of all, what I'm going to say about David San Martino when he came into the WWF, he was probably the strongest, if not the strongest wrestler that I've ever seen. 
And especially when you combine that with a great wrestling talent and knowledge of holds and counter holds, this made this, this guy was really a super, superstar. But on a fateful night in November 1985, after two big slugs behind the back, behind his head, six or seven body slams later, which nobody can take, he walked out of that ring holding his back, and he heard it on his show. He said, I heard his back. I was the better man that night. Now, if you want to believe what he said, you go right ahead and believe what he said. But I've said all I can say about it is that, and, and, and here's another thing. You Google anywhere, YouTube, Vimeo, or any other search engine, and watch that match and see the comments below. 99.9% .9 of the fans back Big Ron Shaw. And they know what happened. And they, some people, that one, that small percentage, they say, well, Ron Shaw stepped in the ring. He, you can see he's telling Dusty Feldbomber to finish. I remember exactly what I said to Dusty Feldbomber just to prove you're wrong and some of the other fans wrong. Is I said, hey, Dusty, it looks like a good sellout tonight. That's what I said. I wasn't telling him any finish because you know what? I had in my mind what I was going to do that night. Because when I heard some type of a rumor going on in that dressing room, I did what I was going to do, the right thing. Now, I hope that answers your question, Monty, Mr. Well, Wise Guy. Well, let me try it another way. Let me try it this way. Hello, Ron. Oh, no. Did David Sammartino really hurt you? It's the kid across the or pond. Or not? You or punk. did you give it up, Ron? You punk. You punk. Oh, punk. Let me tell you something. Ooh. It wouldn't take me oh, no boy. more than two and a half hours to fly down there no. and slap your no. face all over that no, damn studio. Don't. You no. understand me? I'm done. Not I'm done. Come on, Farrow, man. Pharaoh, thank on, you, Ron. man. You were the man. Bye, Ron. This should be the Pharaoh right. and Monty show. Bye, and Ron. I'll tell you something, Monty. If I, ever do it, if I ever do a convention down in New York City, mm. I hope you're there. Over and out. Great. Good interview, buddy. Good choice. That guy was a gentleman. <laughs> that was a gentleman for you, everybody. The Matt, great Ron Shaw. Wait a minute, Matt. The great Ron Shaw. Did he? Did he? Did he hang up and just disappear just now? Yeah. Congratulations. Never again, ladies and gentlemen. The great Ron Shaw. Anyway, the first leg of the Monty and the Farrow Marathon didn't turn out the way it was supposed to be. Look, man, I'm not angry at you, okay? I don't know what wow. I did to piss that dude off. I don't get it. Okay, what I told the story is the truth, but whatever. I want to thank Ron Shaw for at least coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for answering the questions. Congratulations. Anyway, um, you're watching Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. And we want to thank you all for joining us. We're hoping you all join us on Saturday, where we've got a list of great shows coming in. Uh, we opened up with... Um, that looks like Outback Jack. That's Outback Jack. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little pissed I'm off. trying to... The great I, you Outback got me speechless. Jack nice job. At 4 o'clock. You know? We're asking you all to join. It's going to yeah. be wonderful. Followed mm -hmm. by... There's Kevin. Nice Kevin, Kevin Sullivan. I see Kevin. Um, Hi, Kevin. Kevin's yeah. been in studios, mm -hmm. also co-host of In the Dungeon on the Monty and the Faro mm -hmm. channel. And after Kevin Sullivan, yeah. we're bringing in uh, that's Dutch. Man Mountain Rock. I think. I, that no, Dutch, like Dutch Mantel. I see okay, Dutch. Okay, Dutch Mantel. That's going to be a hell of an go. interview. Yeah, focus, Monty. Focus, um, focus. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And then we have Man Mountain Rock, uh -huh. which will be incredible. Uh -huh. And... Then we finish off with Buddy Lee Parker. Nice. Guys, I'm a little, uh, nice. I'm a little no, pissed okay. off right no, now. I have fine. to apologize. That's fine. Did I do, do what, what's all these other things I'm saying? Never mind. I'm seeing other things flying up on the screen. I don't know if they're really going up there. Was I out of line? Um, well, you know, you no. Know, uh, when I talked to Ron during the week, I thought that I, I, apparently I'm not very good at smoothing things over. <laughs> So my I, phone call, tell me my phone call was fucking meaningless. You bro. didn't even tell me you called him. I had no clue. He well, had called. yeah, but I don't. Wouldn't you want me to like smooth it over? Because you know we wanted to have him on and stuff. Well, I wanted to have him on. Come to think of it, yeah. I guess this is all my fault. Gee, well, thanks. I'm sorry I ruined that interview. for You didn't you. ruin it. Uh, you, you didn't enhance it uh, too 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 much. But I understand why. 
I mean, he was like, you know. Wait a minute. Me asking, do you put your mask on? Right. And eat a sandwich. And eat a sandwich is a funny question. I think it's I was hilarious. trying to lighten. But lighten we've it. seen him because we've seen a mask guy eating a but sandwich. But what I'm trying to say, I was trying to <laughs> lighten the right. interview up. Yes, right. So you, did, yeah. you didn't like what I said last right. week. Yeah. He didn't like the I sandwich. It. I got And it. then people want to know about San Martino, right? Of course they do. Was I out of line oh, about that? No, you were, you know. Was you I out of line about asking no. about Terry Garvin and Mel Phillips? No. Uh, no. No, look, uh, apparently uh, you're not his source, right? I mean, what am I, I going to say about that? You know? I'm a little disappointed. I ain't got to be honest, I'm a little pissed off. I'm pissed off and I'm a little disappointed. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, the guy was mean to you. He was like yelling at you and stuff, you know? <laughs> What? What are you making light of it, huh? I've, okay. But he was, what, I, I, what do you want me to do? I'm making I don't know. light I don't know of what it? I don't know what I want you to do, dude. I don't, I, I don't know what I want you I, to do. I'm like still in a state of like uh, shock. I don't even really know how to process Hayes any of this. Machine says, starting off this week with a jobber and ending up with a jobber. Buddy Lee Parker. Oh, this is right. <laughs> I get the audience. Davio says, Monty <laughs> came at you right, right away. <laughs> Wait, came at you as soon as he came on and disrespected yeah. you. Okay, you see? So I should have so, pulled the plug right there. So go with Davio. I mean, I, I mean to give you credit, you let the thing go because you know how much I wanted to have him here. I wasn't well, the fans are looking forward to it. This I guy is a legend. He yeah, is a legend. He's big I get Ron it. Sure. He's a big yeah, Ron Shaw. That's I right. get it. I just, I just was hoping that after speaking to him that it wouldn't be this, uh, yeah, that was a crash on the LIE. Next. Next. <sighs> Thomas uh, Pater says, could he wear the mask to protect from COVID? What? <laughs> Okay. All right. Patrick Rose says, why don't you tell Ron what I said? Huh? Look like a short order cook. Ron looks like a short order cook? I don't know about that, but. <laughs> what? Stinger <laughs> says good stuff. Kind of... Anyway, well, uh, I hope you guys join us God. Uh, Saturday. Now, hold on. Are we drinking on Saturday after this? I'm drinking. Because I'm ready to drink. I'm, I'm ready drinking. To, I'm ready to drink right fucking now. I'll tell you that. With the good fucking wine. Right fucking now. Okay. Because one of my all-time favorite talent enhancements came on, and this shit hit the fucking fan. Thank you. No good. No good. Davio By the said, way. Davio says he has my back. I think I hurt Maria Davis' Davio failings. Has Maria, if you're you out there, you what said happened? awful. Huh? But then she says my questions were relevant. Okay. I, I okay. don't want to hurt Maria's well, I, feelings. No, you better not. But I'll tell you something else. If he comes down to New York, fuck that. I'm out of here like shit to a goose. Anyway, I want to thank you all for joining us. Fat <laughs> Boss of Wells Bank, uh, empty bank account. Ah, Could Boston. he wear a mask while eating a bear hot dog with no bun? That would have been an excellent question. A bear hot dog with no, no bun. Does that mean a skinless hot dog? Yeah, I guess. Because you got to take the skin off of it for it to be. I think asking a mass <laughs> wrestler, does he eat a sandwich with a mask on, is a good question. Yeah. I think it's professional, and I think oh, it's Oh, wait a minute. Honor. It says right there from a guy named Carlos Los Espada that that's, a, that's an excellent <laughs> What do you bring these guys' names up? Anyway, <laughs> want to thank you. I mean, he brings up, guys, if you don't know who that guy is, when we first got well, into yeah, what's it, wrong he was with like you? the first guy. And, and he ate a sandwich. Aaron doesn't forget anybody. With his doesn't mask forget anybody. on. That was hilarious. Anyway, I want to thank you all. We will see you Saturday. <laughs> we got some hot interviews. We are blessed to have you guys in our lives. Do I have to call anybody else during the week? No. Are you sure? You, you are no longer booking guests. Well, apparently I You didn't... are no longer I, booking that, guests. That wasn't smooth like butter? Oh, no. You see, that's what I mean. That was I call like... a guy. He gives me shit. I say goodbye. What are you blaming me for? And then you call him, and we got to go through this. No, you just didn't like your speed with your controversy. I like it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, don't be sorry to me. He's the one that's upset with you. And if he comes to New York, I'm hiding. So that's that's on you. Davio's yeah. got your back. Don't worry. Good night, everybody. God bless. Yeah. See you later. We'll send this out. Good.